I'm Jonathan Mordek. I'm a professor at New York University, and I'm the principal investigator for the Small Firm Diaries Project. When we started Financial Diaries, when they were started in India and Bangladesh and South Africa, maybe a decade or so ago, the idea was very simple. Meet households twice a week and try to track everything they spent, borrowed, saved, shared, everything in the informal sector, everything formal with a bank or a company, to try to follow every single financial transaction and in that way create a full story of their economic lives. And by meeting again and again, to build a trust between the researcher and the households who were being interviewed, to learn their strategies, their constraints, and their opportunities, to tell their stories over time, to go deep into their lives rather than to meet lots of people but only get to know them a small amount. And the Financial Diaries also involves being very systematic using balance sheets and income statements and cash flow measures, all of these tools of accounting as a way to get to know households and firms much better. When we did the original financial diaries in Bangladesh and in India and uh, South Africa, we focused on very poor households. And we started with some assumptions about poor households, assumptions that many people in universities who are scholars, professors, would assume. And those assumptions include that people who are poor must be living hand to mouth. In other words, they consume everything that they earn almost immediately because they're so in need of resources. That they're not thinking about the future, they're not planning, that they're not saving, they, they can't have much of a financial life. But what the financial diaries allowed us to do was to see that most of those assumptions, most of those assumptions are more wrong than right. And that was the power of the financial diaries. Let me tell you about somebody we met, um, or Stuart Rutherford, my colleague, met in the original financial diaries. This is Hamid. He lives in Bangladesh, and he's a backup rickshaw driver. So he drives that rickshaw, but he's the backup driver. He doesn't get to drive the rickshaw every day. And so we calculated his income as about, on average, $2 a day per person. We could calculate that using international measures. So his household's income was about $2 a day, just a little over $2 a day per person. But what we came to see is that Hamid's real challenge was that some days he would earn a lot and some weeks he might not earn very much at all. And so it's the ups and downs of his income that was as much a part of his story as the average number. And we came to see also that Hamid, who was here living with his wife, you can see them sitting on the bed and their young son in the striped shirt, and a few of the neighbors who came in while the picture was being taken. And this is at the room where they sleep and they live. That they have a very complicated financial life. One might think because they don't have much money that they would have a very simple financial life. And that turned out not to be true. If we just ask a few things, we might find out that they have a microfinance loan and a microfinance savings account and a life insurance account. And that's... Uh, due to Hamid, uh, due to Karaja, who has those accounts. But through the Financial Diaries methodology, we came to see many, many more activities that they were involved in, most of them in the informal sector. They were borrowing from a shopkeeper. They were borrowing from Hamid's employer. They were saving a little bit of money at home. They were holding money for others as what we call a money guard. They were taking loans from neighbors and they were holding the savings of other neighbors. And some of those were savings activities. They were thinking about the future, but we wouldn't have seen those 
without getting to know them and understanding all of these things that they might not have told other people. And we could begin to see how they organized their life and why finance was so important to them. Another person we got to know was Pumza. Daryl Collins' work in South Africa involved getting to know a woman named Pumza who was a grandmother taking care of her grandchildren. She earned a government pension, but to earn more money, she had a stand alongside the road where she sold food. You can see her preparing food that she would sell to people who walk by on the road. And the financial diaries, because it collects data over time, allowed us to see her net cash flows week by week over the year. And you can see that blue line which captures those net cash flows, the ups and downs of her small business. And you can see that the ups and downs are as an important part of the story as knowing the average, which is that yellow line. It's an important part of the story because we can see her challenges and we can see sometimes her opportunities when she's doing well. And those two dips in the middle where her income really dropped, we also could see that that is why in those circumstances she had to go to the money lender and borrow loans to get by at very, very high interest rates, 20 to 30% per month. And so the financial diaries and getting to know Pumza over time allowed us to understand not only how she was doing at one point in time, but to understand her life and her struggles and her strategies. We then took that idea to the United States from different parts from New York City to California and to places in between. We got to know Americans in the same way and told their story in a book called The Financial Diaries. We came to know a different taxi driver from Bangladesh, but this one in New York City. And with The Financial Diaries, we came to see how he shopped and how his family lived at home and how he raised his children and their choices and their lives and how they were trying to make a better life in the city. So that's an idea of the financial diaries and why they're an important methodology and a new methodology and different from other kinds of surveys. The most important job in the financial diaries is your job. You have a hard job, but it's a very important job with a lot of responsibility because you're the one who's going to get to know the households, the firms, the businesses, better than anyone else. And it's your responsibility to listen and engage and tell the stories so that we can then share those stories to a much broader audience. As researchers, you're not friends, you're not family of the people that you're going to get to know. You're professionals, you're doing a job. And at all times, you need to be professional, to keep a professional distance, to not make the relationship personal. That's very, very important. This is a job. You're a professional researcher. You're part of an international research team. And your role is to always act professionally, not as a friend of the people you're getting to know. But you will develop long-term relationships, and those can be meaningful. Still, you have to protect the subject's confidentiality, completely and always. Subjects may tell you things that they don't tell anybody else. You earn their confidence by acting professionally, by listening respectfully. And we count on you then to share your observations and data and the important stories that you hear, to be complete and detailed so that we can then share what you're learning with others who want to learn from you. I want to thank you for being part of this research for being such an important part of the research. So thank you very much, and I hope one day we can meet.